Hello YouTube and welcome back to the channel outside the target demographic. Today we're going to be using some spray-on vibration dampening and sound control spray to uh, make the wheel wells a little quieter. Let's get started. At this point I have sound deadened all five doors, a little bit on the um, firewall in between the engine and the cabin, the entire trunk, a couple, I believe I did the B-beam um, and maybe the, uh, I did the rear seat, uh, with the noise deadening. So the last thing I really have to tackle is the road noise coming from the tires on the rear and then on the front of the car will be from the, uh, road noise and the engine bay. Uh, you have the big strut towers there that will, um, translate some of the engine noise into the cabin. So first thing we're going to do, jack this guy up remove this tire. We're gonna remove the plastic skirt that should be inside of your wheel well. And then um, we will go ahead and start applying the spray. With the wheel off and the rust on, that's another benefit to this guy. Uh, it will quiet squeaks and rattles, which you really shouldn't be trying to hide. Eliminate road noise, that's why we're here. Enhances audio performance, that's why we're here. Dampens vibrations, that's why we're here. And I thought I saw somewhere. Where did I see it? Will not crack or chip helps prevent rust. Well, we have a little bit of rust there, but we don't have it under this wheel well, as I've already determined on the other side. So what I'm going to be doing is we have some material sprayed on here. That's why you have a little bit of... Um, uh, stalactites, almost cave wallish kind of thing going on there. So I'm going to be pulling all of these pull pins. There's quite a number of them. I think there's 11, 12 total. Uh, you'll have to feel around for your individual car and see what it has. There are also a screw here and here. I do not believe there is one on the front here, but uh, I'll reply back to that as soon as I get this off. Basically, we're removing this cowling, which is going to expose the metal. We're going to clean it with some rubbing alcohol and break down any grease and oil and stuff that may or may not be on the surface. Give us our best bet. We're going to spray coat it. And it says it is paint, to, uh, sorry, dries to the touch in 20 minutes. So we're going to spray it. We're going to give it about a half hour to dry. And then we're going to put the plastics back on and put the wheel back on. Using my pry tool, we have two up front, I'm gonna take the time to show you. They are kind of tricky. One is right here. And that's gonna be your bigger one. This is the only one. There are many like this, but this one is mine. Uh, there is only one that will fit. I really don't feel like, where are you? Right there. There is one under here. Where did you get off to? Right there. And then the rest are essentially where you can get to them, right? Uh, there is one other oddly sized, but yet smaller than that one. This one, that one. And this one is going to go there. I believe the hole is of larger diameter than the rest of them. So that is an indicator as well. There are two screws, at least for mine. I have the mud flaps. Um, tip for the video, you're probably gonna have rust right here, which is kind of bullshit. Uh, 2018, everything else looks great. So that's, um, that's kind of bullshit. But what we're gonna do is we're going to clean it and we're gonna use some white lithium grease. That's going to reject any um, moisture that is there, prevent moisture from building up, act as a lubricant. It's going to help, uh, it won't get rid of the rust. I suppose the only way to do that really would be sanding it and or painting it. I imagine you'd have to sand it first, but this will all but kill the rust. If um, rust is oxidized metal, if the metal cannot get oxygen to it by having a surface of um, possibly white lithium grease on top of it, then it's not going to continue to grow. I believe that's a plastic panel as well, so I'm less concerned about it, but we're gonna wipe that off right now. And it did clean up a lot of it. 
the rust is still going to be there as i said i did wipe down the plastic panel as well uh, right there you can see where that plastic edge just sandpapers the crap out of it so um just learned about this recently from a co-worker thanks co-worker you know who you are and uh while it is here we can go ahead and start retarding it if not actually preventing it anymore so get yourself a can of white lithium grease i'm considering this i can do with linseed oil i've done the other side i have a video on that um i may be using this silicone spray to be doing the underbody what i can't wipe down with a rag i also ka -chow, did here and here just today with the silicone and it looks cleaner it is preventing rust the only little bit i saw was right here so i can probably touch that up with some clear coat nail polish or something to further kill it but um while you're in here look around for anything that you can be addressing while you're working on this project and let's go ahead and start pulling this cowl out of place in pulling the cowl i found another let me try getting my head under here. There's one, two holes. So there was a second one holding that into place. Now that that's removed, this whole thing should peel out. The cowling is pulled. Basically, it lays in here, right? So if you pull this side and this side together, like you're squeezing a taco, uh, this will just pull right out. Not much going on in here, which is great. I don't see any kind of rust or anything. Those are my fuel lines. Um, we have the gas overflow, apparently. That's new. I've never known that to be the case. And then this goes up to the gas tank. Um, put on the wrong side of the car. There could be a passenger, but there will always be a driver. I, I don't really understand why they do that. Apparently, it's for um, safety things, from what I've heard. If you run out of gas and you're on the side of the road, you are safer in America. Driving on the right-hand side of the road, putting gas in the right side of the car puts you another four feet not in traffic, which I guess follows. Um, I would rather the convenience every day I fill up than the off chance I run out of gas on the side of the road. But all that to say, um, I have it pulled away. We're going to spray this down with some rubbing alcohol, let it sit for a bit, wipe it out and then we can start applying the spray. So I just sprayed the rubbing alcohol and you can see it's already breaking down and running this uh, black build up. And I don't even have to scrub it, which is ideal. Um, also rubbing alcohol being a degreaser and all that will evaporate pretty quickly, especially on a 85 degree day like today because Ohio and uh, fuck the human race. So. I'm going to spray it up as best as I can. I'm going to wipe it out as best as I can between the spray hitting 100% and me wiping it down hitting, you know, 80, 90%. We're going to get all this stuff free. I don't care so much about the aggressive dirtying of the underside of this. We're going to be putting a barrier in between this plastic and that metal. It was like this to begin with, blah, 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 blah. Clean it if you would like to. I'm going to want to make sure that I don't spray into the gas overfill. Um, very interesting. So let me go ahead and wipe it down. I'll bring you guys back in. As I've said before, if what you do results in dirt, then you are not wasting your time. So we got everything in here, spick and span, just so. And um, what you're really going to want to focus on is kind of the bottoms. So all the way around the frame and the trim, that's where water, if it gets in here, is going to sit and accumulate and stagnate and oxidate. So you really want to hit that pretty heavy and then uh, everything else. So here we're looking at, you know, up. We're going to want to make sure that we get the outside edge of that well pretty good. So um, if in doubt, test it out. I did the other side before this video, so I'm pretty familiar with how well this sprays. Uh, I also found out on the other side, don't be wearing watches. So take your watches off. Um, it does spray pretty, um, let's see, I'm maybe six inches away. So it does have a pretty tight pattern. 
and that's kind of what you're looking for. You want this to be relatively thick. Um, and it will just spray into place. It doesn't run or uh, bleed or anything like that. It stays where it's supposed to be, which is the whole idea. And we have a before and, and we have the after. Go ahead and shove your phone up in there. Make sure you hit everything you wanted to hit. Looks pretty good to me. Uh, you may notice this can is less dirty than the other one. I already had to go ahead and get a second can. So to be fair, I did double coat the other side. This one went in a little bit better, I feel, probably because it was a new can. But you get three of these cans for $45. Uh, you'll notice this is also a little bit different um, visuals on the front. But uh, it says it covers 20 square feet. I'm not too sure about that. It's done two wheel wells. If you consider that this is, uh, what, foot and a half deep by maybe three feet, that's not 20 square feet, but fine. So uh, don't get a single can, I guess, is the moral of that story. Go ahead and get the triple can. It's substantially cheaper. I think it's like $12 a can versus the 20, 25 for a single can, something like that on Amazon. Uh, at this point, we're going to go ahead and let it cure and then I can get started on the front half. So I imagine I could remove a couple more screws and all to get this cowling out of there. I really don't care. I just pull this down and spray, simple enough. The beauty of this is no one's going to see it because it's covered by this plastic cowling. So. I'm just going to let this sit kind of uh, hanging here, a little bit of airflow, set an alarm for 30 minutes. It takes 20 to dry to the touch, so I'm going to give it 30. And uh, the longer it bakes, the better it'll be. Even if this starts uh, chafing a little bit through or, you know, squishes it into place, I don't think it's going to be too big of an issue, but I am going to give it the 30 minutes. Looks much better. Um, again, if you have rust, address it first. Uh, otherwise, you can just spray this right into place. And I imagine it'll sound better. I'll take it for a drive on the way to work and I'll uh, record the decibels as I usually do as soon as I complete the front as well. And I imagine this is gonna make a substantial difference. The wheel spinning is gonna make noise, the transaxle, the axle, the muffler, all that stuff, in addition to the road noise, especially salt, snow, water, rain, um, potholes, garbage, we're, we're in Cleveland. So this can only help, and it has the added benefit of preventing rust from being able to start, as well as freezing rust into place because Rust ain't going to be, or uh, air isn't going to be getting through this by definition. So we'll let this cure and then we'll button it back up. While I'm waiting for this to cure, I decided that I have a pair of behind the neck earmuffs that, um, uh, do they even say? I want to say it's 22 decibels reduction. So it's basically a uh, ear pad, a foam pad, and a plastic shell. So I figured I already have this stuff out. I'm gonna go ahead and pop off both of them and go ahead and spray them. Why not? Got nothing to lose. We are 20 minutes later, well, 30 minutes later, and everything is dry to the touch. So we can go ahead and button it back up. It looks fantastic. It's very um, shimmery, shiny in the video here as I look at the screen, but um, it's almost like a matte finish in reality. So looks much better, should be quieter, if at very least it makes it a little bit quieter and prevents rust from forming, I will be very happy. So let's go ahead, button it back up. All buttoned up. You can clean in here if you'd like to. As OCD as I am, I don't really feel the need. And then we did spray a little bit further down here, even though the plastic cowling is not going to be touching that. All that the road has to offer will be. So make sure you do 
a little bit of overspray it's fine we got a little bit on the muffler i imagine that'll boil away here very shortly but that's what we've got let's go ahead and put the wheel back on also before you put your tire back on go ahead and check your brake pads make sure they're good mine are but you're in here anyways might as well do what you can while you're here let's get the tire back on all right so we're off the jacks go ahead and tighten them 92 foot pounds you guys have seen these videos before if you follow my channel but 92 foot pounds and we're going to torque it 10 times we're going to do each one twice because it's better to torque them twice than to forget to do one once so let's go ahead and do that okay now that we made a mess we're going to move that mess to the front and get started on the fronts so this one has substantially more probably eight more pieces there's a couple odd ones that are actually in front of the wheel well um can't really figure it out myself so i really don't care while i'm in here apparently that is where i can install a um fog light or auxiliary light so i'm gonna look around um do you get out of the way do i need to swear at you i'm not above that no well, let's shove this in there and see subaru is usually pretty good about having a wiring harness already ran down here i'm not seeing one although what does that do no nope, that goes to something else so i'll dig around off camera um i do want to put in some auxiliary lighting i'm uncomfortable with how little people around here pay attention so as always we're going to spray this down and uh so far it looks good they did have something here already but it looks like you can already see through it there and there and a little bit there so we're going to overachieve overdo what they did cover more of this that's just a big old resonance chamber there so we have a before oh yeah so when we look up in here there's nothing stopping that from doing that so we have our before and and our after so sadly that is still tinny which means this is not a um, noise deadener as much as a insulation kind of like the celeste matting that i've been using um, is a insulator versus a isolator which would be the noico stuff so luckily i still have the noico i'm going to go ahead and put a strip and a strip and do the same on the other side um, maybe as this dries it will expand and give us a little bit more um sound uh reduction by that i mean for those of you who haven't followed i have done this door i have not done this panel So there's a substantial amount of noise being generated as the car is shaking or going over bumps and stuff like that. And this is not a small panel. Uh, clearly the door is bigger as it should be, but I'm gonna cut and place a strip on both of those. And uh, I now know that I can save the deadening or the uh, spray to complete the wheel well on the other side. So we'll let this cure for 30 minutes, cut back. A half hour later, everything is dry to the touch. So we're going to go ahead and button this back up. I did apply the Noico deadener mat. I think I have a little bit here and a little bit there. It is better. It is still very tinny. Now, to be fair, we have this plastic thing that is off, right? So all the noise is going to come down. We have the hood up, which is going to make it make noise. But it is not as dead as the door is but the door is also being held in one two three right points of contact this one's like one two maybe so the whole thing is flimsy it, it's gonna happen but it is better than it was let's go ahead and zip everything back together 
So we put in all of our plugs, super exciting stuff. Again, address anything you need to while you're in here. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I did the brake pad check, so I know that those are good. It's a little rusty, but uh, Ohio, uh, rust belt. I feel like I've mentioned that a couple times. So everything's in, do a couple push-ups, make sure you're not missing a couple pieces or forgetting something. See if you didn't pick up a plastic trash bag or something on the highway and put it back together. Now we have the other side to do. I'm not gonna bore you guys with the details of that, but let's go ahead and get that side done. And then I'm gonna add in a little bit of the audio on the highway doing 60 on the way to work, assuming it's not raining. And uh, we'll have some commentary on how much it did or didn't affect the noise. So I just got to work. We have the uh, results here on the decibel meter. Um, it's not the most accurate as it's a free app and I don't know how receptive a cell phone microphone is to all the ambient sound. Uh, different frequencies are gonna pick up stronger than others kind of thing. Um, even taking the phone out of my cell phone holder bumped the highest decibels from 89 up to, I think it was 91, 92, uh, you can see on the screen here. So something as minor as, oh, you know what would help if I did this. Something as minor as a turn signal is gonna be like 65 decibels. Here you're probably gonna hear my dash camera start yelling. Of course it won't, I'm trying to prove a point. So something as simple as the noise of changing gears has, you know, 60, 70 decibels to it. Uh, what I will say is on the highway, I hit 74 decibels as my average. Now, again, that's taking into account one at 60, 65 miles an hour. It's not zero decibels outside the car, right? You have uh, wind, traffic, poor exhausts, uh, being passed by semi-trucks who are diverting and blowing wind all over your car. Um, we have a number of potholes and uh, what I would consider speed bumps on the highway. So all of these things will translate into sound. So it's not necessarily fair to say 74 decibels versus the zero that would be outside. And it's not fair to say, you know, your car is only trying to quiet the road noise of a perfectly smooth road and the engine at a consistent RPM kind of thing. But all that to say, I hit 74 decibels as my average on the highway. As soon as I came to stop getting off the exit ramp, it dropped from 74 to 73. So I believe the last result was 74, 76 ish. Um, it is making a difference. It's hard for me to visually or audibly uh, show you that, um, doing what I can, but I will tell you it is so much quieter. Every time I add something to the car, it is quieter. I'm getting to the point where I have to relearn my transmission. I have to relearn my friction zone for the clutch because I'm mistiming it now that I don't have the audible cue of the engine, the RPMs. Uh, rev matching all that stuff. So it is absolutely making a difference um, We are probably 11 hours into this project and As I've said before and I'll say again in this video If you have an hour this weekend and three hours the next weekend and access to tools this weekend and you don't have to spend 10 consecutive hours doing this and I'm learning as I go versus making these videos for the benefit of the tens of people out there who are interested in this kind of thing. Uh, if you were to watch these videos, see how to do it and the results of them, you could determine which ones you want to do and what order you could be taking your wheel off to spray the underbody as you're removing the doors. And 20 minutes later, when the door is done, you could put the wheel back on and there are ways to make this faster. But I would say probably six, seven hours combined. If you had the dedicated downtime and didn't have two toddlers, but uh, it just keeps stacking and it sounds better and better. It's fantastic. Let's cut back to the regular video. And that was my how to spray the wheel wells of your wheels to make it quieter and less likely to rust 
registered trademark. Um, relatively simple. Again, you're getting more familiar with your car. You can check your uh, tires, your axle, your brakes, your rotors, your pads, your all the things while you're in there. And um, gets you a little bit quieter on the highway. And didn't cost that much. Prevents rust. These are all things that add up in my book to be well worth the time. Maybe it's worth yours. So as always, this is Thanks, car. Outside the target demographic. I appreciate you guys stopping by. Any questions, comments, concerns you have, leave them in the comments section below, and I will catch you guys in the next video.